Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The ultimate draft kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wore the shirt. You I don't know I did. We had keep it secret. Keep it safe. Keep it safe. So you whispered it. That was the yes. Let us. That was the solution. Let us whisper together. It's one half of teams playing one quarter of its football time. Soon. Soon, everyone. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. We shall rejoice. I'm very excited. It's Thursday. We do have football. <laughs> There's some football. There are a couple games tonight. <laughs> how, I mean, it's how do you talk in italics? <laughs> how do you talk? How do you speak <laughs> italics? Yeah. Uh, I will say this. Um, you know, the buzz. It's it, football time. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, That's Italian. Oh, okay. Not italics. My bad. Oh. <laughs> Those are different words. <laughs> yeah, they okay. are. They really are. Oh, it's that's a football a, that's time. That's a swish, Jay. <laughs> oh, like, that's man. incredible. Uh, I did watch the first episode of Hard Knocks, Mike, including the introduction of the. How off putting was that? It was pretty off. I mean, they should not have narrated through. No. The- I think I know why they did it, though. They shouldn't have. But what happens is they do the intro to Hard Knocks. And this is the Chicago Bears. Right. Uh, I thought the episode was fun. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Um, not enough Keenan Allen. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but they go right into a musical intro to the episode. So you got the intro to the yeah. show. Then they go into this musical intro to the you know the stadium and everything. And they I think they needed they felt like they needed narration. And it was a mistake. And like the the actual like the narration. To be fair, of of setting up, reminding people that, like the team history. One, once upon a time, the Chicago Bears were a feared team in the NFL, and it's they're trying to get back to that. So I get, I understand what story they're setting up. I'm just saying that that the first time you hear that music in August is like a an electric jolt to your body. We have two games: Panthers, Patriots, Lions, Giants tonight. Uh, preseason week one officially getting started. What did you think of uh, Eberflus? I, I think he's he's interesting. Um, like he, I, th- I thought he seemed like a uh, maybe a, a fun guy to be around. Yeah. Oh, and, really? Yeah. That that's it. So I have I have not watched, but in press conferences, things I've watched there, Eberflus hasn't come across really as like the the fun guy. So I'm that'll be interesting. It, it, it's like a, one he seems that, like a dad. Yeah. The one thing that hit me <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I and mean, he's, he's got his. His daughters are featured a lot, like um, knowing football, watching all these games. And and um, what was crazy to me is just that, like, the dichotomy for the Bears and the Bears fans out there between keeping Justin Fields or making this transition. Because that was the discussion and the debate long ago. Justin Fields, the fantasy numbers, so prolific. Um, and it's just such a different feeling for the future of this team to have Caleb Williams. Yes. So, um, very disappointed in his uh, rookie performance. Oh, that was bad. It was talking about singing in front of the, the yeah, yeah. And, just, and like not going after it. You're the leader yeah. of the team, man. Get after it. I know, not a good sign. Um, all right, ultimatedraftkit.com. Head over there. 
100 plus player profile videos. We break down everybody. We've got player projections. They're changing all the time. We've got uh, our My Guys episode coming up soon, which is an it's an outpouring. You know what? I'm going to give a hint. Oh, oh. whoa. I'm going to give a little hint because there's really no way for people to figure this out. So I did notice. I have my My Guys figured out. Like, they are locked. You, you're, wait, you wait have, number three got locked. Yeah, in? I got. I'm all locked up. I didn't. I see mean, it. I, I reserve the right to pet us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but they're locked up. But they ended up magically, and I didn't notice this till afterwards. Back to back to back in my rankings for one of the positions. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, is that they are somehow right next to each other in in one of my positional rankings. So um, there's there's a little reveal. But is that next week? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've got, you know, high expectations and uh, excited to hear your guys as my guys on the show. But um, ultimatedraftkit.com available now. Check that out. Uh, let's do some uh, let's do some preseason. Preseason power up. All right. What are you watching for this preseason? So this doesn't have to be just one player. This could be a team. This could be a position battle. This could be Matt Eberflus's beard. I don't care. Tell me what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, the number one thing I, I've been wanting to see, and it's ironic that I haven't watched Hard Knocks, is Caleb Williams. I want to I want to see the number one overall pick, the highest touted rookie in, you know, several years. I want to see what he looks like because um, from a fantasy perspective, I'm, I, as well as all three of us, are still well behind ADP. Uh, his ADP on the on the what could be is really really high. People wanted to take a, a shot at getting that superstar. There's great potential. Oh, for sure, great he comes potential. in and and rocks as as a rookie. I, I, that, but that's why I want to see it because I I understand there is huge potential for success with the wide receiver core he has. I've done you know most of my statting on just historical truth. Even great Hall of Fame you know first ballot quarterbacks that don't usually come out. Guns a-blazing in their rookie season, especially when it comes to throwing touchdowns. So, yeah, that's that's one thing that I will be uh, certainly watching. And I'll double up because the Chicago Bears are playing the Buffalo Bills, and we just got word that Josh Allen and the first team is going to play up to a quarter. We'll see if it, it might just end up being one drive. But point being, who is out there? Like, who is out there immediately? The Bills wide receivers, it's a an absolute – not an absolute mystery, but it is shrouded in a mist of war that we just we aren't a hundred percent sure of who's going to emerge and be the guy, if anyone. But on top of that, we know that Josh Allen is probably going to throw for four thousand plus yards and a whole bunch of touchdowns, and someone could be incredible. And yet, the ADP on all these guys is at a point where, if one of them hits, it's a it changes your entire fantasy roster. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. Okay, the first team's playing. Their first time they line up in three wide receiver sets, call your shot. Well, who are the three wides? Uh, well, Curtis Shakir's Samuel. Shakir's out there. Yeah, Curtis and Shakir are locked. It's the, is Keon Coleman out there right away, or is it someone like Matt Collins who's gotten a, a little bit of buzz about being an outside wide receiver? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, we don't even need. And will Matt Collins be wearing cleats? Yeah, I think by rule he has to, but will he be eight feet tall yet? Because <laughs> – Boys still growing. Uh, the the Bills, there might not be the guy, but we would like a guy or two to yes. count on for fantasy. Yes, absolutely. And I'll throw in another offense, uh, just the Bengals battles. Like mm -hmm. the, the backfield with Chase Brown and Matt, um, Zach Moss. And then beyond Chase and Higgins, who have dealt with injuries, Higgins going to move on at some point. But um, Chase Yoshi, is dealing with a hurt bank account right now. Yeah, Yoshi Voss, Trenton Irwin, uh, Jermaine Burton, and whether he can break into the rotation – We've seen big games from, you know, Jason, you've talked all about Burrow and not forgetting how great Burrow is. And have we gotten news if uh, if Burrow is starting in preseason week one? Because he is someone that I I really want to see, like, his health. I'm so excited if he's if he's back in health. Uh, my vague memory. Oh, my gosh, I wouldn't play him if I were them. Let's see. <laughs> okay, we have. We know uh, Kyler's not playing so in the preseason. Coach Taylor on Up and Adams on August 4th. I intend for Joe to play. There was a point where we wouldn't have whispered it's football time quite as quietly. But oh. the preseason is oh, so different now. Yes. It's it's been six years stripped ago stripped of what it used to six, be. Six, seven years ago, it was just it's football time. We get a quarter of football. This is like you've got a sleuth 
down beat reporters to see who's playing in these games. And then you end up with situations where first team offenses play second team defenses and you're not really 100% sure and like last and they don't year run the, their offense the Pittsburgh Steelers look unstoppable oh, yeah. oh, do you yeah, remember yes. this how how unstoppable their offense was Kenny Pickett's yes. entire career in it, a week he, he was like 90% completion through preseason every drive and a touchdown is like wow we should be in it turns out <laughs> tur nope. turns out it's preseason football against some vanilla second streamers he is who we thought he was the, and we let him off the hook. I don't think you can learn very much at all watching offensive systems in the preseason. Almost Agreed. nothing. And so, so when you talk about like, oh, I want to see the Falcons. Are they are they going to be great? I don't. You're not going to know that. Um, but I can watch Brock Bowers run a route. I can watch what he looks like against NFL level defensive players. So you know, seeing some signs and signals from individual players is. Um, I think the most valuable thing, it, it will get the hype trains going. It will move the ADP of players in different directions. Uh, we all remember the carry on Johnson run uh, around the world that, you know, a couple preseason runs. Turns oh, Amir Abdullah. Yes. And Amir Abdullah had the one cut to rule them all. Just boom, choo. <laughs> it's true. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Those are a few things we're looking for. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The Jets activated Mike Williams off the PUP list, which is, you know, to me, a great step towards uh, not wasting the money you spent signing him. <laughs> yeah, that that is um, that's great. I mean, if if they've got him week one, I think it it changes the offense a little bit. Jaden Reed missed practice with a calf injury. Uh, he is back today. Christian Watson took a big hit. Stayed down for a while, but then returned to practice, and the team said um, they had just kind of avoided uh, a major injury, and he think they think he'll be good to go. It's a little scary. When, yeah, when, I mean, I don't want to be on this ride. Yeah. Is <laughs> <laughs> that auto <-tuned? laughs> It really was. I don't want to go on the ride. You're saying that specifically and only with Christian Watson ignoring the Jaden Reed calf? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. No, no. Let's be fair. Jaden Reed missed time at the end of last year. He dealt with injuries. He plays a little bit Debo esque with not a Debo body, so you're going to get beaten up. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, yeah, Christian Watson. We have the 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 longer run of frustration. So I I don't. I actually did uh, make a change in my rankings based on this combination of news. The fact that you got the calf injury, and yeah, you're back. You're you know, so it's over. But it's like. Andy, you know this. When you when you tweak a calf, like you, you better hope it's over because you don't know until you're out there, you know, uh, exploding off of it. And then Christian Watson's just peanut peanut brittle. Um, so Romeo Dobbs then? I mean, maybe it was actually flipping Jordan Love and Kyler Murray. I had ah, Jordan Love okay. ahead of Kyler Murray, okay. and I just see that there's a little bit more risk there to me if you've got a questionable health of the very talented wide receivers. The uh, Cowboys RB depth chart, there's been some comments about Rico Dowdle. Mike would be remiss for us not to bring it up. I didn't um, put this in. <laughs> but you wanted it. Just let the record show I didn't put it in. I think the quote you're referring to is from John Machada. At this point, it would be a surprise for Rico Dowdle not to make it. He is my favorite uh, to lead the team in rushing. I do want to point out it is this guy's favorite to lead the team in rushing. Not necessarily Mike McCarthy's favorite. Yeah, I and I agree. We we broke down Rico Dowdle a lot on this week's Dynasty podcast, uh, so you can go back if you want more of an in depth. But it's a like the the reporting out of Cowboys training camp has been since the pads have been on. Rico Dowdle is the one with the with the most juice, the most electric player. That doesn't mean that Mike McCarthy and crew will not feature Zeke. It just means that there is an opportunity here. For Rico Dowdle. Yeah, and I, I think everyone would agree Rico Dowdle has more juice than Zeke at this point right now. The question is, is he as trustworthy, as reliable, sure. as as you know, entrenched in the the game plans? Et yeah, cetera, the et I mean, do, do the Cowboys look at their offense and say we need the player with the most juice here, or do they look at their offense and say, look what we did last year? trusting the passing game and Dak and CD and, and Ferguson and do we just need reliability like you said so 
Uh, the Ayuk trade watch continues. Oh, man. I hope it never ends. Lame, lame morning, guys. I know. No new news. The past few mornings, it's you can wake up to find like 25 beat reporters talking about he's going here, he's going there, and today was just nothing. Ayuk wants to thread the needle in such a way yes, he with does. this deal that I, I started to wonder, is he just going to play for the 49ers? Because... You know, he, 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 oh, I want, I want $30 million. Okay, we'll give it to you. Oh, not the Patriots. I'm not yeah. interested. He wants the 49ers to give him $30 million. Uh, it, 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 we're at the point now of has, has Ayuk seen what the market for, like the teams he actually wants to go to? Does he have the contract with, like, we've seen reports that him and Pittsburgh are aligned in what the contract would be, but San Francisco, and Pittsburgh are not aligned in the compensation to trade for IU. I've seen people disputing that, saying that no one, uh, no one has gotten to the finish line of an agreement. It's just it's all over the place. But we're now getting to the point of we need a resolution. Like if if Brandon Ayuk is trading, changing teams next week. Yeah, that, in preseason week two. I that's do not, worry about that's not great. No, offensive it, integration. Yeah, it's football time. Yeah, yeah. yeah see, we're already here, man. So. Where where are you guys are you at the point of uh, this maybe week, he man. just plays it out? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's the best thing for the 49ers. Yes. Have you seen uh, Nick Bosa's comments? I mean, he's just yeah. like, you could tell that dude is depressed about losing Ayuk on this roster. Um, it's a it's a devastating blow to their Super Bowl chances if they actually trade him away. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaacom slash insurance. Let's uh, take a quick break. And then we're jumping into running back rankings. I will say this before we jump in. The uh, Ayuk news and just the, the compensation requests from the 49ers. You know, there's rumors that they wanted Pickens back. They want Amari Cooper back. They want draft picks. All this money. Like, I do think the NFL looks at Brandon Ayuk as – at least a player that could reach a top eight, top five range at the wide receiver position. Because these, the compensation, you know, if the Patriots are going to give him $30 million in picks, that's just a lot. So I think the view of Brandon Ayuk is very, very, it's very high in the NFL circles. Yeah, I think the one player not, not getting enough uh, talk in this whole situation, both pro and con, is Ricky Pearsall. Their first round wide receiver they drafted this year, like, He's been injured a lot. If he was tearing up camp, would they be so, we have to get sure. Pickens back, we have to get Cooper back? Like, they draft, they knew that they might not be able to play both Debo and Brandon Ayuk, and so they drafted a first-round wide receiver, and it's like, that that should be the solution. It seems like to the 49ers so far, it's like, Well, uh, I look, uh. it's it's not necessarily Pearsall, right? Like, Juwan Jennings has been a contributor on this roster for a while. You talk about deeper leagues, you talk about dynasty leagues, there's no guarantee that Ricky Pearsall is taking all the snaps. Like when we, if this trade goes through and they don't get compensation back a wide receiver, this conversation goes well beyond Ricky Pearsall. No, for sure. I'm, I'm just saying. I think Ricky Pearsall, it ha must not be impressing them that much. Well, he's just not been on the field. Well, sure, that's part yeah. Of it. I mean, I, I think uh, they drafted him, as you would say, to, to be, be great. great. Running backs. All right, we are in our running backs ranking countdown uh, 20 through 11 on today's show, looking at our half PPR consensus ranking. So this is not, um, you know, we have these guys at different spots, but uh, this is where they landed on our big board together. And starting out at number 20, Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, I am currently the highest at 20 on the dot. You guys are a little bit behind on that one. Um, got the bag of cash, obviously. He's he on my did. dynasty team. I made sure to get that done for him. But a four-year extension, he's now the seventh highest paid running back on a per-year basis. And I have a lot of – I think he is capped by the offense and the team in terms of total fantasy finish upside. But I think Ramondre is going to do literally as much as he can possibly do this year from a workload perspective. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty enthusiastic about – you know, his chances to finish between 12 and 20. I think he's mm -hmm. like one of the more solid RB2s you can get. And right now the draft cost is at the back of that range. He's a sixth-round draft pick. 
I could see his name slipping in certain drafts, right, where, you know, there's just not an interest in Ramondre coming off a of RB36 year. Where are you with Ramondre? Yeah, I, I, I'm very, very similar to what you just described. I, I'm confident in his ability. I'm confident in his workload. Those are great things. I'm also pretty confident in his health. I know he missed four games at the end of last season with the ankle sprain. However, this was a team that was on track for a quarterback pick, and when he got injured in week 14, it was like, hey, let's shut him down. You know, th this was not a team trying to make the playoffs where he was trying to rush back from the ankle injury. He's got the body, the size to be able to take a workload, uh, you know, work. Load? <laughs> what? <laughs> Allow myself <laughs> to introduce <laughs> myself. Hold on, let me get that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To take Run a work, that back. To take a workload, workload. Yes. So workload exactly. squared. Yeah, so uh, he... The team loves him. The team is confident in him. They do. They want to run the football. It's just a matter of, are they going to be ahead in enough games, in enough scoring positions to have... I mean, if, if, if at the end of the year, uh, you've got five total touchdowns for Ramondre Stevenson because the offense wasn't very good you're going to have the running back 26, 27. But if he ends up with eight or nine, 10 touchdowns, he, he very well should be around running back 15 or higher. He was uh, he was on the My Guy finalist list for me. And Ooh. and I just, the uh, four and a half win total for yeah. for New England uh, hurt that. But Mike, could he finish as the wide receiver or as the running back 10? No. No. You don't I, think so? No, I do not think that he can get there. The Look, an offense can turn things around. The Houston Texans were projected to be the second or first worst team last year. Obviously, C.J. Stroud came in and put that into the garbage can. Can Drake May do something similar? Uh, I mean, at, at this point, it doesn't seem like it because it certainly feels like Jacoby Brissett is going to start the year for, for the New England Patriots, and then they'll eventually, eventually make a changeover to Drake May. It's... I don't want a I, I I don't want to bet on a running back in such a bad offense. You know, when when the guys around him is like it DeAndre Swift. I have a lifelong feud with DeAndre Swift, but and and You guys are in civil court right we, now we sorting are, it out. Yeah, we're hashing it out. Yeah. Uh and I even I have Ramondre, you know, just in my median projections slightly ahead of DeAndre Swift, probably because of the feud. Like I, it, it's it's personal for me, but like Swift or uh, Najee, he's more of a question. Like he's kind of really similar, I think, to Ramondre Stevenson. But there's like there's guys going right around Ramondre that he feels more like the consolation prize of the running back in that range, as opposed to someone who I think that the offense could really take off. Uh, yeah, the the money says that he should be the guy. Um, and he was the RB eleven in twenty twenty two. Yes, it's not like and, they and, won the division that year. Right, but the uh, and what was his reception? Yeah, I was right, going to say he had a year, million in front of you Mac dump offs. So that that's, that's I still think that's going to be a part question. of his his uh it should the recipe this year with the wide it, receiver. It one hundred percent should be. Yeah, he had eighty eight targets, which is a great that's way outrageous. to become an, uh, an RB one. I I I without Drake May turning things around, um, I don't see running back ten in Ramondre's outlook. However. I disagree with you, Mike. I think when I look at the running backs, he's going around. Swift, Najee, Zamir White. Ste he's steadier. I would much rather have Ramondre of, of all of them. Josh Jacobs comes in at 19, 26 years old, being drafted as the RB11 right now. That is a big – I mean, that's one of the areas where we unanimously have him a little bit lower than – I, I I think this is one of the areas we could just be wrong. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's this scary. is the number one area where I could see um, – Good offense, check. Yeah, and a workhorse guy, pass catcher, a lot of talk about that. Marshawn Lloyd, ball uh, ball security issues. and um, There is a lot of talk of A.J. Dillon, AJ Dillon yeah, being I mean, the running back, too. I think, I think I said we were bringing this up a few weeks ago. Like it, it, This is one of those situations. You may want Marshawn Lloyd to get opportunity, but they like what they have in A.J. Dillon right now. I Mark felt far more confident in our take of Josh Jacobs when it seemed like Marshawn Lloyd's this yes. exciting rookie who's going to come in, and, and Green Bay will platoon. Like this is, they're going to 100% platoon. I know that Jacobs, in his history, has shown, no, I can be the three down guy. I don't think that's how they're going to use him. And if you have an electric player behind him, getting like the those efficient, like he's he's ripping off you know chunk runs, 
I'm less confident, Jacobs. But if it seriously is A.J. Dillon as the running back two, then this will be a, a ranking that I – move I eventually scooch him up a little bit yeah the obviously everything you're saying is is good and and the fact that there's ball security issues right now with Marshawn Lloyd is concerning because that was one of the major knocks on him in college he he put the ball on the ground a lot so if you're a rookie and you're doing that it's very hard to trust for a team that is a cha has championship aspirations yes. to say hey put the rookie who's going to put the ball on, on the ground out there it's it's tough but Josh Jacobs is not going to be a workload, a, a workhorse back. It's just not the system that has ever been here. A.J. Dillon, we all remember how bad he was last year, and he missed games, and he had 208 opportunities. They don't, they don't give it to anyone, and they had Aaron Jones, who was, who was well. So I, I will agree that this could be a huge whiff. Josh Jacobs on a good offense, who just led the NFL in rushing two years ago, uh, ha should have goal line opportunities and catches the ball. This could be a, a massive mistake, but he, he was very inefficient last year and won't have the total volume he's had over the last several years. Yeah. He's only 26. He, he might get a lot of that volume. I might. think that might be one area I disagree. But I it, think but that there's a very good chance like if, be, if you're he could be the workhorse for this Lafleur, team. LaFleur, I mean, if you, if you listen to LaFleur, he has said this more than 100 times. He's said... I don't believe in having like a workhorse back. He believes in a in a in a in using multiple backs to keep them fresh through the season. Yeah, I mean, I just could I would be so shocked if it was like now he changes his mind when he said that so many he said that to the beat reporters like, "Ah, you guys know me. You know that's that's not what I do." So I would just that's what I'm basing it on. Certainly Josh Jacobs just based on the talent, if you've got a rookie putting the ball on the ground and you've got AJ Dillon behind you, you sh you would want him to get all the work and be a workhorse, but we I, talk about injuries with Watson and uh, uh, you know Reed earlier. Like Jacobs in the passing game is something they've talked about extensively, and that's something they want to use. So um, he does have opportunity. I don't think he's realistic to finish at nineteen where we have him. I think you either have a more disappointment or you end up with way more upside. We're just not willing to throw. Uh, he's at like the two three turn right now, so. That that's where I have ended up with none of him. If he was, you know, where we have him ranked, I would love to take the shot at the upside. But if you look at who's going around, yeah, give him, me yes. some names. Um, okay, so around the two, three, Pacheco. Turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm easily on the Pacheco. I mean, side like so, right in front of him, ADP wise on sleeper would be Derrick Henry. I'll take Derrick Henry. Pacheco, that one is like that one's not even close for me. But like Rashad White, who is about a round later. Let's say you you know you are in the back of the third, you're targeting a running back, and Josh Jacobs slips a little bit, are you going to go with him or are you going to take Rashad White? No comment. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I thought you were asking Andy because Rashad uh, White's is, I'm Andy's asking guy, the room. But, um, I, would take, I would take Rashad White there personally, and, and it's not just the running backs there. I mean, you, you, you look at um, the wide receivers that are around where of he's course. being picked and the tight ends, you know, Nico Collins. I, I would much rather have Nico Collins than than Josh Jacobs. I, I'm curious. Do you guys have the ADP comparison tool up right now with Jacobs? I can grab that for you real um, quick. Because, okay, so he's going – he's a fourth-round pick. Over on ESPN. In ESPN. Un underdog, he's wow. He's a fifth-round pick in underdog. That's wild. Um, But then his highest ranking right now is that uh, sleepers at 302. So – yeah, if you've got the UDK, we have under the research tab an ADP comparison tool. Go look at what platform you're on and see. take a look at some of the differences there. We might yeah. highlight some here coming up. 18, Raheem Mostert. So, wow, he made it up this high? He did. Whose fault is that? Jason's. Yeah, and I and I and it is my fault and I've I I I am. Uh, what, you I'm got sorry. an apology it's, for us? I don't. I didn't mean fault. I meant more like who's doing whose yeah. responsibility. Yeah. No. I, you know, look, he was the running back two last year. <laughs> yes, he was. He got money this off season. He's perfect for this system. I do believe when they get near the goal line, even though you know I love Devon Achan, I I think Moster is their better option for goal line opportunities. But goodness gracious, I mean, he had twenty two touchdowns last year. I think he had nineteen in his career heading into last season. He had an outrageous amount of his total fantasy points come from touchdowns. So my, my ranking of, of Raheem Mostert, I believe, is needing an update. 
Mostert, yeah, you were you were really in on Mostert a couple of months ago. Um, his two seasons in Miami was RB26 and RB2. His ADP is RB25. The excitement around Mostert needs to be about the value that he represents in fantasy drafts. Yes. More than the opportunity for him to repeat last season. Because, you know, even if you – even if you salvage 30% of last season's upside, you're going to finish above RB26 in this kind of an offense. This is a machine, and the machine worked with Mostert as a key cog in the red zone. It just it, it, it just was too abundant to repeat. It was nearly 50% of his fantasy points came via touchdowns. That was the highest of any top 12 running back since 2018. Only three games without a touchdown, and those games were uh, – flops how often do you have a seventh round draft pick in fantasy that you feel like is has no chance of failing for you i mean yeah, that's that's what that, most feels like it. right yeah. now is that he's like the safest seventh round pick in the history of the game like he, what what do you put his touchdown floor at eight 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 is, is seriously what i was gonna say so yeah. like eight touchdowns in the seventh round for the running back position with with what if a chan gets hurt Right. If HN gets hurt, it's oh my God. it's holy crap. Raheem Mostert goes to a back to a potential league winning running back. So I I love his I love I love where he's going. Yeah, Kyle just pulled up his line on underdog. It's eight and a half rushing touchdowns. And he's going that late. It's yeah, I mean it's, it's, that's a stabilizer. Me having him at running back fourteen feels too high, but where he is, he's an exceptional value. And this is one of those things where Sometimes you want to know if you love him, if you love Raheem Mostert, and you're like that is, I think the best value in the draft. Then, then, then bypass Devon Achan earlier, you know, so that you can grab him later. Or you know, you, sure having having ideas of where you're going when you start your draft. He is, uh, <laughs> he had 19 career touchdowns going into last yeah. year. And he has uh, 20. He had 21 last year. The the thing about both Achan and Mostert is we we build our rankings off of a like a median projection, you know, kind of calling your shot on some guys where you see an upside or you see some regression coming. Truly projecting the Miami running backs is very difficult. Like to say that eight, what was Achan was like eight yards a carry or something absolutely ridiculous. It you can't. So you can't, with in good conscience, say this guy is going to carry the ball for six plus yards of carry. That, that's just it can't happen. So both of these guys, HN on the upper end and and Mostert as a value, they're they're both hard to project. But I want them both mm -hmm. on my team. At number seventeen, James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals, twenty nine years old, being drafted as the RB nineteen in the late fifth round. His body is forty two years old. Man. No, he's like a, he's just but, I mean, oh, better no, with age. He's buff. He's like he's got old man strength, but he's got wear and tear on his yes. body because the way he plays, it takes uh, usually about four or five guys to bring him down. So he he takes like six hits every play. Where, right, where most players are just like you know every now and then that first hit brings you down, and that's good for your body. Like, yeah, he he said if if there's a certain guy that starts to fall off because of age, he'd be the one to delay that. That was that's Coach Gannon. Gannon's a you know thoughts on him he is the um like he's the guy in Arizona right now yeah I mean all the talk of Trey Benson early in the offseason the the fact that they they spent a day two capital on a on a really talented back right now he has not established himself as even the backup to James Conner uh there's a three-way competition for that the clarity in the Arizona Cardinals offense is that James Conner's the dude and then there are backups which He's a team leader, team captain. They run the ball a ton. He, he was a league winner last year. The, uh, this is this is not James Conner. This is just a recent update. If you had not caught it, the preliminary depth charts are coming out. These are always to be taken with a grain of salt. Trey Benson was the RB two listed on that initial depth chart, despite all of the the rumblings coming out of training camp. So that that's that is something to pay attention to. Um, what is the chance that James Conner finishes in an RB1? Uh, I think he has a very good chance. I, I mean, So you look at him much differently than you look at Ramondre Stevenson? 
Yes. In terms of I I think that, I mean from a projected, you know, win standpoint, Arizona's a better team, but I think the Cardinals offense is going to be the the surprise offense of the season. Yeah, the the the, the nice thing about the I mean, obviously the Cardinals win total is higher than the Patriots. The Patriots have a really, really, really good defense. And the Cardinals have a really, terrible, really, yeah, really, 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 really bad defense. So for fantasy football perspective, the Cardinals are gonna have to put up a lot of points. And they have the weapons now with Kyler fully healthy. Marvin Harrison Jr. here, where you don't look at the Cardinals' offense as a bad offense, even though you look at the Cardinals as not a great team. RB 5-11, 3 5-3-1 to finish the season last year. That was fun. All right, number that 16. Was RB 6-4-12-5-15 to finish the year prior. He I loves mean, the end of the year. He's, he does. Be, oh, see, another. Defenders get tired. What is, what is a Yeti? In the desert. That's just Bigfoot. Mm, yeah, no, no Bigfoot's in the fur. woods. Too much fur, man. Yeah. A, a, a desert Yeti has to be hairless. Yeah, oh, for sure. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah that's they, disgusting. That's like adapt, Slender Man. I would stuff. not look at that. I would not I would not want to look at that. When I see it's probably hairless cactus like furred animals. Oh, cat yeah. It's you just know what a I mean? saguaro. Yeah, with legs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Kenneth, arms grew downward. Uh Kenneth Walker comes in at sixteen. Mike, I feel like you have things to say about Kenneth Walker right now. You have him at nine. You are um, you're keeping him inside this top twenty for us. Very good word from uh, Ryan Grubb over there uh, last week about Kenneth Walker and all of his potential in this offense. I feel like there's a player like Kenneth Walker is one of the players that has been talked about not. woefully not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the. It has. It felt really like radio silence on Kenneth Walker, and but the, the a thing about that is to not let just a silence dictate what it, your your complete thoughts about a fantasy player who, when he's on the field and healthy, the guy is an electric home run hitter. Loving the fact that Ryan Grubb, like specifically on the quote that came out. He's electric out of the out of the backfield as a pass catcher. Could be coach speak, one hundred percent. But the fact that we're even talking about Kenneth Walker as a pass catcher from the coaching staff is a very positive sign. I mean, you want to talk about it's been radio silence on Kenneth Walker. What about Zach Charbonnet? Like the who exactly? So I mean, it, the, if you are, it, I, I'm attributing that to to both of them of that. Silence means that nothing has really changed. That can, when when on the field, Kenneth Walker is the guy, and Zach Charbonnet is just a backup, a, a, a capable backup that would become a bell cow running back should Walker miss time. But in the meantime, it's Kenneth Walker's backfield, and he's one of the the running backs like young Saquon. Where if you're at the fifty, you go, there's a, there's a chance that he houses this. Kenneth Walker is not yet twenty four years old. I don't know why it doesn't feel that way. You know he's. His, his still, road has been exhausting already. Yeah, exactly. And and if you look, he's going. You know, he's being drafted next to Aaron Jones. Um, it, Kenneth Walker has physical capabilities to have upside that other guys just don't. Because you can end up the season with four different games where he had a forty yard touchdown. The pass catching would stabilize him, and I don't yes. think when we did the divisional breakdown show, I think all three of us had Seattle at the bottom of the division. Yes. Which you know, so much talk about the offense and Metcalf and uh, yesterday was JSN and Gino, but like winning ball games is going to be essential because he's been game script dependent a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He much Home games wins. he's much better. Wins he's much better. So that is just something to pay attention to. But at sixteen, um, and his his ADP right now is right around there. So RB sixteen, fifth round pick. Joe Mixon coming in at fifteen. Look, Joe Mixon is going to be a selection that you don't take pleasure in making. You don't make that draft pick and say to yourself, "Oh boy, it's it's James Cook and Pacheco and and uh, youth and and upside and unseen capability." It's probably just a pick that you make, and you're like, you look back five weeks from now, and you're like, you know, I'm really glad I made that draft pick because. Mixon's going to – he's getting all the praise from the entire coaching staff. We are long – we're gone with the um, the Pierce excitement in Houston, and, and Mixon's been brought in to be 
the workhorse. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I have excitement over Joe Mixon. You you saw the Damian Pierce experiment the first half of last year. It wasn't working in the system, and he's he's been talked up kindly from the coaches, but I think they're really going to utilize him in the special teams, maybe in the new kickoff return rules. Joe Mixon was brought in and traded for and then paid a ton of money. When you listen to them talk about Joe Mixon, they can't they can't speak kind enough words. They are just espousing glorious uh, adjectives all over Joe, Joe Mixon. What a pro he is! How he could do everything. His work ethic. He is an. They're very excited to unleash him. When they changed to Devin Singletary in this offense last year, from the time that he started getting the majority of snaps on, Devin Singletary was the running back nine, and he had. Um, I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but I want to say he he was north of fifty, or he was on a seventeen game pace of fifty targets. So, I do think there's a world where scoring opportunity is up from the Houston Texans offense last year. You add Stephon Diggs, the second year with C.J. Stroud, and if he is used as a three down back and a goal line back, Joe Mixon could easily. I mean, this is this is a guy who last year we talked about Raheem Morris, obviously same team or uh, Raheem Mostert, same team and all of that, but. Joe Mixon was the running back five last season. Yeah, he was. He was he was so solid. He had the second lowest bust rate of any running back, only behind CMC at the running back position. And and um I just think he's so steady. Like when you look at Mixon and Walker, who are back to back in ADP, Mike, I mean that is a Ooh, that's a that's great a question. very difficult decision to make based on your team makeup. Yeah, and uh it, like, to be fair, I felt down I felt low on Joe Mixon last year and that was a complete L he still he was the workhorse for the Cincinnati Bengals uh I mean the a difficult part is one is his age and his the amount of seasons that he has played in the NFL like he is at the cliff of a situation where it could just evaporate and be absolutely gone uh like I'm talking about he's two steps too slow he's been very inefficient the last few years and he's getting it done on volume the volume is probably the same for there I'm concerned about the running back targets it was I know Jay Singletary started getting more involved I've it got was, it now he, he was on pace for 51 targets and 40 receptions but on the on the course of the season it was still the second fewest targets to the running back position and I just looking at him compared to other guys I just I have huge red flags that I'm concerned about where even when Singletary took over I mean you had you I mean, you had those outrageous games where he was running back three running back four but then 20 33 couple good games so I just I have concern for the ADP of so would Joe you, Mixon. you would take Walker I would take Kenneth Walker what yeah. would you do Andy uh I would take Mixon cool next that, that, next guy that didn't help you no, it did. I, I just didn't want to answer the question. But I thought oh, you would. I, thought okay. you would no, easily I, take I, I, I would. I would take okay. Mixon. Um, this team could have brought Devin Singletary back. Yeah, they could have. And they went out and got Joe Mixon. They had to make that effort. So uh, we'll take a break, and then we will come back with uh, the remainder running backs on the countdown. Well, it wouldn't be another year of fantasy football unless we were talking about... I forgot this existed. Alvin Kamara, Super Camario. I feel like we didn't the, get to play that no. last year, even though he was it implies, great for fantasy. It implies speed. Yeah. You know? It implies not getting tackled by the first guy. Yes. You know? Cause the, yeah, star power. Yeah, you're, you're flashing. Yeah, he was maybe the smaller version of Mario last year, but it's still like a pretty Eat right. this man a mushroom. <laughs> yes. I mean, I want we're going to talk a lot about Alvin Kamara over the next few weeks as we lead into the season because you oh, talk about my, my guy hint. That's not what I said. I know that's not what I said. Uh, he's 29 years old. Um, last season was awesome once he got out on the field, and his skill set is the kind that translates better over time, right? Like he is sure-handed, knows the offense can pass block, uh, great release valve for uh, – uh, what do you call somebody who's not courageous? Uh, coward. coward. Ah, Derek Carr. Derek that, Coward. Uh, yes. Um, Derek Carward? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Carward. Boston. No, yeah, I'm fine on that one. So, 
air ball. <laughs> <laughs> the the reality for Alvin Kamara is that you just need to accept the boring points. Guys, uh, Kyle just highlighted it. We all remember. Oh boy, we yeah, we all remember yeah. how disgusting it was to watch the offense. Talking about the Saints' offense. If you're in a PPR, absolutely delightful and delicious. Kamara's first game back, 14 targets. Oh, Unbelievable. heck yeah. Believe Wide receivers don't get 14 targets. How many of those did he catch? He caught 13, 13 of them, Jason. 13 receptions? An unbelievable catch For rate. what, 200, 300 yards? 33. <laughs> That's 33 yards on 13 receptions. Don't care. 13 I, receptions. Point, point, this, point. If you're in a PPR, fantastic. I hate it. I hate, no I hate it, but like I ex I hate it, and I accept that this is probably a another re-roll, a good situation. Fifth round pick. For, for fantasy. Like, yeah, you don't have to spend a third on him. You are you can load up on wide receivers. Like You you can literally go get three elite wide receivers, Get a, even throw a tight end in there, and how, then Alvin Kamara is there just catching. How old is Raheem Mostert? 31, right? Yeah, 31, 32. Alvin Kamara's 29. He was the RB2 in fantasy points scored from weeks 4 through 15. Yeah, and he's in the same system. And the, and the thing is, is... And who did they find in the passing game to... That's to, what I was going to bring like, up. You might like Rashid Shahid and believe like, oh, I, I think he can catch some downfield bombs and has good sync with Carr. This is not a guy that's going to be up there at 140 targets. A.T. Perry, uh, you know, it's like coming into his second year, you've got... Does Dennis uh, Allen even Dennis like the him? Menace, uh, Dennis the Menace up there. No, Dennis the Menace does not like I, That's Perry. what I thought. Does I don't he think like he, anybody? I don't think he likes his players. I think he likes <laughs> Alvin Kamara. Um, yeah, I mean, Equinemius St. Brown, Cedric Wilson Jr., Bob Means. These are the wide receivers. So the the wide receiver two here after Chris Olave is Alvin Kamara. Oh, yeah. And, and we've seen, you know, the Kendra Miller buzz is terrible. Jamal Williams is, is mostly toast. He's burnt uh, toast. Taysom man. Hill just comes in here and there. It doesn't matter. Oh, like, he, oh. Dennis Allen loves Taysom Hill for oh, sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. <laughs> like he's yeah. in his will. Yeah. <laughs> like like Dennis Allen's house Sorry, goes to Taysom. So I think the the headline here Taysom is Taysom gets the vet. We do have him three. <laughs> you, you know, you know Dennis Allen has a vet. Oh, yeah, he oh, does. He is one hundred percent driving a core vet. I probably if, if there's some Saints down. player if there's some Saints players listening, go out and take a picture of his vet. Because I know it's there. He drives a Corvette for sure. Can't stand that guy. You really can't. Um take the disgusting points with Alvin Kamara. Yeah. We've got him three spots ahead of his average draft position. Oh man, I hate it. Yeah, but he's he's going to be very good for uh, any kind of half PPR, full PPR. Kyle's league. going to do the research on the vet. <laughs> okay, dude. If you. if it if it oh if it if pans out true. if it pans out just on point. Rashad White at thirteen, twenty five years old, also gross. RB seven. He's like young Camara. Mm -hmm. Um, right. I do think that I think he's a very talented player. Uh, I love him in the open field when he has the opportunity to get the football. Uh, and it's not, you know, your traditional lineup behind the 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 fragmented, broken offensive line. I, I still saw a lot from Rashad White that was, I think, better than other players in the receiving game, obviously. Nearly 100% catch rate. And the question with Rashad White is just what you believe about this offense's ability to come back and, and do enough. Yeah, it it is. There's concerns about the, the offensive coordinator change, and it just – like at, at this point of the career, it would I think be shocking if Rashad White is all of a sudden like an explosive rusher. You know what I mean? Of like if he jumps up to a high four yards per carry, that that would be very surprising. So he, it, it seems like he is who he is. And is this the right price? What, Jason, give me the ADP again. He's the thir RB thirteen off the board. He finished his seven last year. Is this the right price for Rashad White? Early fourth round pick. I think it's a fine price for him, and I'll be taking a wide receiver next to him. Um, it's not that he is a bad player. Um, he's very Leonard Fournette. I think he will get a ton of work. He will receive a lot of passes. So this is, you know, this is, you know, that's not bad. It's, it's very similar to Alvin Kamara. Where, what round was Kamara? Fifth. Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather have a fourth-round wide receiver in Kamara than a than a fifth round wide receiver and Rashad White. It seems like though Rashad White is 
somehow feels like a rock solid volume play, but also a house of cards of the the fragility of if his inefficiencies continue and the new the the new old coordinator or whatever they they like what they maybe they like what they see from Bucky Irving or something like that for for pass catching if the volume dwindles at all there's no there's there's nothing to fall back it's, on it's should wild. that crumble he he's the RB7 and they were the they were dead last in the NFL in yards per carry you got Liam Cohen now as the offensive coordinator Canales is gone but you have stability at quarterback and in the in the head coach and in what they've been doing so um, very comfortable with that spot personally. And uh, depending on what you believe about the player, like I don't think Rashad White is I, – I think the efficiency can improve. I really do. Yeah, if the, if the offensive line takes strides, um, you know, the, he, he had a real bad offensive line last year, and it, I don't think he's got a great one this year. But if it does take strides and steps forward – maybe opening up some stuff for him because he was very efficient in the pass catching game. And so it's like, I think some of his inefficiencies in running the ball are team. I don't want to make a uh, Travis Etienne mistake with him either. Sure. Like the depth chart is as, as terrible as a depth chart as you can really get in football. But for Travis Etienne, it's, I know that if some snaps go away, that this guy can, this guy can run it in from 30 yards out. Where Rashad White's not gonna do that. You, uh, like since 2019, 14 fantasy running backs finished top 10, but at at uh, 0.75 fantasy points or or fewer, and then 13 of those 14 dropped in fantasy points the next game or the next season. So it's it's just it's it's a very fragile situation. I think I, I like Jason's take of like if he drops in a draft. I'm happy to take him, but where it is at ADP, I'm probably going to look at uh, a a wide receiver or maybe even a tight end. James Cook comes in at 12. James Cook. Or James Cook, baby. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's, he's the um, he's one behind Rashad White right now. Keep it that way, people. I talked a lot about the Buffalo offense and the question marks that I, I believe exist when I was bringing up Josh Allen earlier. Uh, tough division. Sure, your offense worked for a little while, uh, but is Joe Brady going to get figured out? Here's what we can say. James Cook was a, a, an extremely effective player for this football team. 20 opportunities per game over the back half of the year as the offense turned into a running offense. Uh, number one in yards before contact, super explosive. Uh, RB11 on the year last year. There's tons of reasons to love James Cook this season. It, the, absolutely. The, the second half was fantastic, and we have – seen like we have a uh, Kyle we have the article still on the website right about vacated targets and running backs still there so you can go check that out the fantasyfootballers.com tons and tons of articles going up there every day uh but we our team looked into it of vacated targets it's so easy to for us to put the puzzle piece down oh Stefan Diggs is gone and he vacated whatever you know a high 20 percent of the targets Let's just put Keon Coleman in here, and we'll give him you know whatever twenty plus percent. It rarely works like that, and often we see the running back is the one who benefits the most from from siphoning some of those things off. And if and James Cook more than capable should those targets go his way, I think that he would be uh, an absolute steal at his ADP by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm not gonna overstate this this stat sounds pretty cool I'm not saying that uh James Cook is uh, Brees Hall level but Brees Hall last year had 318 opportunities and finished with 1585 total yards amazing James Cook last year had 291 way fewer opportunities finished with 1567 total yards almost the same as Brees Hall you don't remember how efficient he was right. and he didn't score touchdowns you know uh, he had two rushing touchdowns Six total, he, he had four receiving touchdowns. So this is a player who in his second year was the running back 11 and now is becoming probably a more important piece of this offense going into his year three. No Stephon Diggs, probably more involved in the passing game. And if a few more touchdowns go his way, he has a ceiling out there that I don't think people are seeing. Do you take any issue with Joe Brady referring to him as Jimbo? 
<laughs> so I I would have taken issue with that, if not for the fact that in him calling him Jimbo. Yeah, read the whole quote. Oh, I is it in here? I, yeah. I've got it for you. I think from a running back, as long as they're able to drive their legs and play physical, it doesn't matter the size of the back. As you know, I feel confident with Jimbo all the way down that it's third and one. So the question was talking about short yardage, goal line backs and short yardage backs, and. Uh, and in fact, it started talking about Ray Davis, and he switched it over to talking about Jimbo that he's confident in him, even in short yardage. And that would be that would be amazing. I mean, obviously, the goal line back here is Josh Allen. You, you're not going to have eight rushing touchdowns for James Cook, so that is a true cap. However, it, it, when he's on the field, he's going to be great for fantasy. And and when the offensive coordinator shift happened, he was phenomenal. Down it the is. Uh, it, it's worth saying he had a 35 percent bust rate. That was the that was tied with the 2022 Jamal Williams for the highest bust rate among top 12 running backs. Yeah, but most of that, I believe, was during the first 10 weeks of the season when he wasn't doing very well. Like the first, you know, you, you, you went from 14 opportunities a game to over 20 when the offensive coordinator shift happened. And he scored 15 Are you telling me all his bust games came from his bad games? I'm saying That's that it was a different system. I'm saying that when the system changed, that is what we're going to see more of James Cook this year. Because it's I that dare his bus games over. to come from his good games though. Yeah, it would be our true trick. It, and just the last thing to throw in for me is he was a second round pick, like his this the the, the rookie, NFL draft. Yeah, yeah. The 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 stench of his rookie year, I think, is still permeating the success of the second year for him. Like he is he is becoming the player that they hope they drafted. He Didn't is he fumble James? on his first carry. Was he one of those I'm pretty guys? sure I almost positive James Cook came in and fumbled on the first play of his career. Oh yeah, yep. Kyle is echoing you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this year he becomes who he has always been, James Dalvin Cook. <laughs> it's his Yeah, it's his birth no, we, name. we got it. He forgot that. Boston. <laughs> Devon A. Chan comes in at eleven. The last name we'll talk about today. Jason, you don't get to talk. Um just kidding. He was your fire yeah. pick on the Ice and Fire show. And, you know, uh, Miami's fast, man. Miami is so fast. It's such a machine. The first half of these past couple of years have been incredible for the Dolphins. They just – people aren't ready for the speed. I don't know if it's the lack of practices. I was – when I was watching the uh, Hard Knocks, I I just marveled at this conversation between Eberflus and Caleb Williams, and it was all about seven practices. It's like, wow, you had seven practices with this team, and you've made great strides. It's like – they don't practice enough, man. <laughs> they don't anymore. And um, here's, you know, Miami hits uh, hits the ground running every single year. His efficiency was uh, out of this world. It wasn't all amazing games for Devon A. Chan. Like we, we, you know, I don't know what the season looks like if you just take away the Denver game. <laughs> 203, yard, uh, 203 yards on the ground and um, – I think he had four touchdowns in that game. Uh, that'll, he did. That'll change things a little bit, but you know we saw some more variance over the back half of the year. We saw the upside. We also, like Devon Achan, the, there's a world where Devon Achan just doesn't get, on certain games, he doesn't get the touches you want him to get. That's all I, I think is worth saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked him up on on the, the fire episode. If you want to go back and, and listen to him, I'm fully – and I, I spent the whole offseason going back and forth because it's a dangerous pick. He's small. He's breakable. He got injured several times last year. Um, but he's also electric. This is the first year coming in where he's not, you know, practicing for track and field in the 40 time. He came in to be an NFL running back, and a lot's been made about that. And to answer your question, and if you take away that, that insane Denver game and, and the, the game before when he was 10% snaps, the nine games he played, he had a 17-game pace of over 1,100 rushing yards, over 300 receiving yards. He would have had a real, real nice season with ton with double-digit touchdowns. That's yeah. without Denver. Um. So A. Chan comes in. His his ADP is RB nine. Jason. So are you offended by us having him at eleven? Um. I am. Uh. No. I am not. Uh, he's dangerous. He's he's a he's a risky <laughs> wild card pick. I will be drafting him. He's any He's dangerous. Anytime I get the opportunity, I want him on my teams this year. But that's one of those where it's like you got to be okay if you're wrong. And if you want to bypass him, you know, I talked about it earlier. If you want to get Reem Mostert, 
um, later in the draft that you think he's a good value, and so you're going to take someone else just to leave you that ammunition later? No problem with that. Is there a world, though, Jay, where you take A-Chan in the second, and then you just – you also take Mostert. Yes, there is a world where I would be willing to do that if it's at a good value. If he, if, if Mostert is as late as I've seen him in some drafts where it's just like, what is he doing here? Yeah, grab him. A good pick is a good pick. Now, in the mock draft we did head-to-head, -head, I also had Tyreek Hill. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, yeah. It's too, that's a real overload. too much. What is a group of dolphins? A pod? A pod. Yeah. You didn't yeah. want a pod? That was only pod three. We're up to the pod four now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Fussing. Man, I'm, I'm on no a roll here. No one has any idea what I that was. I am on a roll here. You do, Mike. Yeah, okay. All right. That was that was for you. <laughs> but I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, Andy's face is of pure disgust. How, what does the Dolphin King think about having three... <laughs> About having three dolphins um, on the same is roster. Would it, that is, be a mistake? Is Andy? there any more office jokes you want to slip into this conversation? We have a live show on Los Angeles, <laughs> ballerslive.com, if you want to come see Mike and I. Uh, ballerslive.com in LA on August 24th. Tickets are available. Um, lower level is pretty sold out, but uh, the mezzanine seats are beautiful. They're that's great where, up there. That's where Mike, uh, or rather Jason, will, uh, if, if we let him come. He will shoot a bunch of autograph memorabilia and shirts and things up into the crowd, and um, it We've will be some sweet signed jerseys to shoot up there. It'll be a lot of fun, and again, that is presented by our friends at Sleeper. Uh, so excited to partner with them on the live show, and then uh, Pristine Auction and Fantasy Cares also partners there. Ballerslive.com for the 10th anniversary Megala show. Uh, it is a great time. Do you think anyone has ever been irresponsible enough to take Drew a Lock. To, oh. to to take actual signed memorabilia and shoot it out of a cannon? No. Nice. No, but you'll be you'll be doing I that. I can't imagine. Uh we have our top ten running backs on tomorrow's show, Friday episode. And so looking forward to counting down the rest of those. Quarterback and tight end rankings next week, tips and tricks episodes next week, and the my guys episode coming next week as well because guess what it's football time it's football time it's a football time <laughs> all right that'll do it for today's episode of the show thank you for listening to oh, us oh yeah enduring we love you catch you tomorrow goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.